Howdy everyone, my name is Darren Payne. Uh, I am also uh, Marin Payne's dad, if you know Marin at Wilburn there, and I am also Mrs. Payne's uh, husband. Um, I am also Sergeant Payne uh, because I serve in the United States Air Force. Um, and then I'm also Dr. Payne uh, because I teach classes at Texas A&M and Sam Houston State University. Um, and I guess I'm also a trustee Payne because I am on the school board for College Station ISD. So I wear a lot of hats. So how the heck am I in the Air Force too if I'm doing all those things? Well, uh, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to tell you. First, we got to do a quick social studies lesson, okay? And you can go ask your social studies teacher if I'm telling the truth or not. But before the United States existed, we weren't a country yet. We were still colonies under the English Empire, and we did not have our own military. We didn't have our own Navy, and we didn't have our own Army, or Marine Corps, or anything like that, okay? So what we started was groups called militias, and these were farmers um, and teachers and um, the very few doctors that we might have had, um, the lawyers, but people that were in our country before it was a country and they were still colonies. Um, and we decided we wanted our own country. Um, and so George Washington, who was our first president, was the general for the Continental Army um, to put them together. And um, we went to war with the British and it earned our independence. So when we celebrate on 4th of July, hopefully we see cool fireworks and have a good barbecue. That is the day of independence for our country. And then of course, interestingly enough, Texas was its own sovereign nation as well for a while. So we have this really cool history. Okay, well, what does that have to do with the Air Force and us celebrating Veterans Day and all the great things that we have? So the militia concept never went away. And so we have what is called the guard, active duty, and reserves. Those are all different parts of the military. So, um, and I, interestingly enough, the Marine Corps, so we've got Marines, Air Force, Navy, Army, and Coast Guard. The Marine Corps is one day older than the United States. They were actually uh, developed on November 10th, um, the day before, um, uh, excuse me, the day and the year before um, our independence. So November 10th, 1775 is when we started the Marine Corps before we were a country, um, which is pretty cool. So um, the Air Force is the newest branch of the military because uh, airplanes were newer as they developed uh, with the Wright brothers and then we used them in World War I a little bit and then we really started using them in World War II. So the Air Force used to be under the Army. It was called the Army Air Corps. Okay, so now we have the Air Force and that's what I'm in. But how do I do all these other things too? Well, we have the Guard and there's National Guard, which is Army, and then there's Air National Guard, which is Air Force. Um, and we also have the reserves, okay? So what, and then we have active duty. Those are people, and it might be uh, your parents or relatives or um, somebody you know, they are in active duty in the military. That means that is their full-time job. That is what they do all the time. Um, and they might be sent to other parts of the world. Um, they could be activated here to help out, um, all kinds of things. And then we have the reserves. The reserves are kind of like the guard and the active duty. Um, they are primarily here, but they can be sent all over the world when we need them. And a lot of people in the reserves have what we call civilian jobs too, where they do other things like I do. Then we have the guard. The guard, the Air National Guard, which belongs to the Air Force, um, it does homeland security first. What that means is like when we have hurricanes, um, like we had Harvey a few years ago, that was a bad hurricane that hit Houston. We get activated to help out with that. Um, and then um, other times with things like when COVID happened, um, I was actually activated and sent to the Houston area. We worked in Conroe to help people out, make sure people were getting food and all that good stuff. So even though we're in the military, our role is um, not just to go to war, but to help um, people and countries in times of peace, in times of stress. Um, when things go wrong, there might be a natural disaster like uh, like a hurricane or earthquakes or tornadoes or tsunamis or all these things that can impact um, us, the United States and other parts of the world. So what I do is on one weekend a month, um, I go serve in the Air Force um, and my base is down by Houston. What we do is counter drug operations. 
Um, and we have other stuff on the base. We actually have drones that um, uh, have been working over in different parts of the world to help keep peace. Um, and they actually um, uh, can help in times of war also. Um, what I do is counter drug operations. So we are trying to keep illegal drugs um, out of the country and then catch bad guys who have drugs um, that are in our country. So we have a really cool plane with a very sophisticated fancy camera on it. Um, we can see at night um, and we can see heat signatures and all these cool things. Um, and we work with different counter drug organizations such as um, drug enforcement agencies and police officers and all that good stuff. And so we do all of those things primarily um, in Texas, though sometimes we go to other states to help out, other parts of the country. But most of our work is right here in Texas. And most all of our guys um, are what we call drill status guardsmen, which means they have other jobs. Some of them are pilots. So if you fly on American Airlines, um, that might be one of your pilots. Um, we have folks who work at NASA in Houston. Um, we've got folks who work in oil and gas. Um, we've got folks um, who work at HEB um, who do this part-time. So they have their full-time job at home, which allows them to be home um, a lot of the time and still serve in the guard. And then sometimes we also get to sent to trainings, um, different trainings. I've gotten to go to several survival schools um, because I teach and train the pilots on their survival schools. So we get to go play in the woods and learn how to build um, really tiny fires and make beds um, out of sticks. Um, you can actually take um, small bendy sticks and you pile them up really big and it actually works like a mattress if you're out sleeping in the woods and we make shelters. Um, and we learn how to signal for help and rescue people and all that good stuff. Um, it's a lot of fun. Another one we get to do is water survival. So if we have an emergency and we land in the water, um, you are out in the raft for a while until you get picked up. So we got to go parasailing, like the parachute um, deal you do behind a boat. And then they dropped us in the Gulf of Mexico. And then they left us there for about half a day in a one-man little tiny raft. Um, and that's just to see what it would be like as if you were in an emergency situation. So sometimes we get to do really cool things um, and fun stuff like that, um, especially since you know you're not gonna be there for very long, it's really not that hard. So it's a lot of fun to get to do those things. Um, it's also really fun to be able to help and serve in the community. And so if we catch back up, we started all the way back from the start of our country and to have militias, and now where we're at today, we are still kind of that same thing where if the country needs us, then they call upon us and we can get activated to go help with different um, situations and things, which is something that this country has been doing uniquely for hundreds of years. And it's an all volunteer military. That means that none of you are required to serve in the military. Everybody in the military has chosen to, to serve, chosen to do that. So um, that's why we wanna thank our veterans who have served uh, before. You can serve for a while and get out of the military. You can serve and earn money for college. You can serve and earn money for your family and all those cool things that we get to do. Um, and then you can do other jobs as well. So it's a really neat benefit that we get to do. Um, and all the people that have done it long before me, um, my uh, parents have done it, uh, my grandparents have done it where they served this country. Um, and so we wanna thank all the people that have done that um, before us and help them out. So um, I hope you learned a little bit today about how these things work. Um, and hopefully maybe next year we'll get to, uh, as we work our way back to normal, we'll get to do this in person and I could answer questions. Um, but, uh, if you have questions, um, maybe you can talk to, uh, Mrs. Payne or whoever, uh, your teachers, um, Mr. Hackthorn and see if, uh, see if you can get those questions to me and I'll do my best to answer them. But I appreciate you guys. Um, and when you see people who are veterans, um, you know, it's really nice. It doesn't take much of anything just to say thank you for serving. And that's a nice thing to do that makes people feel good. So. Um, one thing I want to emphasize, keep learning about social studies and history and our Texas history and our U.S. history because it's really cool what people did a long time ago and how it impacted us today. Uh, so thank you guys very much. Have a great day and uh, I hope you enjoy your Veterans Day.